I welcomed you to the entryway at St. Thomas Aquinas Church in Western New York. As we enter into the church, we enter into God's space. We come together as community believers. It should be a welcoming place. So often, some churches have people at the door welcoming us to create the environment, to invite us to come in, to come in and pray. As we enter the church, it is our custom that we bless ourselves with holy water. Here at St. Thomas Aquinas, the baptismal font is near the main entryway. And so that serves for us to bless ourselves, dipping our hand in the water, making the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We do this to remind us of our baptism, our entry into life with Jesus, dying to this world to rise with him in new life. He gives his life on the cross for us, that we may have the eternal life. Jesus is the light of the world. By our baptismal font, you see our Paschal candle, our Paschal candle that we burn during the Easter season and at baptism, when we receive the light of Christ. Jesus is the light of the world. As we proceed on further into the church, it's my understanding if you travel in some old churches in Europe, you'll find churches that don't have pews. It's our custom we have pews, to, a place to come together, a place to gather, as we listen to the words of Scripture. In other countries, it's, they often stand for the Eucharistic prayer. In our country, in churches with kneelers in it, we kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. If there's no kneelers, we stand. Stand risen with Christ. While the kneeling is a sign of our humbleness, recognizing the sacredness of what's going on. Surrendering ourselves to God. So let us take a pause for a moment as we continue to look around our church to see the different things they are so familiar to us that sometimes we forget to think about them. We just take them for granted. One of the things commonly found in many Catholic churches is artwork. But it's not simply there for artwork. It often says something about our faith. One of the most common forms of artwork we see in churches is paintings, tapestries, or statues of saints. And here it's important to realize we do not worship the saints. We venerate the saints. We worship only God. But we venerate the saints for the example they are to us and what it means to follow God and His ways. Of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary is the ultimate example of this. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. here at St. Thomas Aquinas Church, if you turn around after you enter the main entrance of church and look up, you'll see the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, an important image for Hispanic community in our area. There are many different ways of depicting Mary under her many different titles. Our Lady of Guadalupe is important to the Hispanics because of her parents to, to Juan Diego and Guadalupe. So we use this Hang this tapestry here as a reminder of that image. We have other statues here to remind us of God's, the example of the saints are to us in following God's ways. One of the other commonly depicted saints in a church is the saint for which the church is named. Here at St. Thomas Aquinas we have an image of him. We think of him as a scholar, but we must remember all the theology he did it was not for the sake of theology, it was not for the sake of academic work, but it was to seek a deeper relationship with Jesus. And so when we look at the statue, we don't see a human being that we worship. We honor him for the work he did, that St. Thomas Aquinas did, to help us to better understand our faith, but better know our faith. 
Different saints serve as examples in different ways. Perhaps you have your own patron saint, you have a favorite saint. That you use an example of what it means for you to follow Jesus. Sometimes what we perceive as artwork in our churches can have a very specific place in our prayer. Probably the most commonly depicted form of this is the Stations of the Cross. There's 14 stations total, depicting what Jesus went through, his suffering he went through in his passion for us. I stand here before you by the 12th station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Yes, there's artwork to depict, to remind us of that scene, to help us visualize it. But not just as our work, but to think about it, what it means for us in our faith. Another common form of artwork in churches is the stained glass windows. And often are just decorative colors and that, bringing beauty to the church. But they too can also contain artwork. If you look up at the top of this one, you see a lamp. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is the Lamb sacrificed for our sins. The various symbols in the artwork help us to think about images of our faith. Sometimes it's a dove reminding us of the Spirit. Sometimes it's a cross. Meant to help us to remember what Jesus did. I mentioned the importance of artwork, of how we use the image in art in church to help us to think about our faith. We also use music. I stand next to the organ to remind us of the importance of that music, the importance of giving praise to God in song. We listen to the music, sacred music, solemn, holy to quiet ourselves, not to rile ourselves up, but to quiet ourselves, to center us on Jesus. And the words expressed in music often express what our faith means to us. It's not just music to make us feel good. There, are, there is a Christian music that can make us feel good. And there's nothing wrong with listening to that when we're out and about, you know, if we want to listen to it on our iPods or at home or in the car. But in church, we use sacred music. Music that draws us in, that calms our souls to lead us to God. We give praise and worship to God in the songs we sing. Speaking of the cross, it's important for us to realize that in the Catholic churches, when we look near the altar, in the sanctuary area, the sanctuary being the area around the altar with the ammo residing share, and in the sanctuary will be a crucifix. And we make a distinction of just the crucifix for, of the crucifix with the body of Christ on it versus an empty cross. At times we use depict just a cross, thinking how Jesus is freed from the cross, but reminding us how he gave his life on the cross for us. But for the Eucharist. We use a crucifix with the body of Christ on it, remembering how Jesus sacrificed his life for us. And it's that sacrifice that we celebrate in the Mass. The sacrifice we celebrate on the altar. The altar is a place of sacrifice, a place where sacrifice is offered. And it's not some new sacrifice. We don't offer sacrifice animals or anything else. Well, the sacrifice we offer is not a new sacrifice, but the sacrifice of Jesus, giving his life for us on the cross, so that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have eternal life. Other items in the sanctuary area. Behind the altar, you can see the top of the presider's chair, where the priest is. 
here in the sanctuary as a sign of the one who presides at Mass, who leads our worship as we come together, as we celebrate the mysteries of our faith. We also have what we call the Amber, sometimes called a pulpit, sometimes called a lectern. This is the place where the Word of God is proclaimed. God's word is important. We need to listen. We need to embrace God's word. During the, altar, during the Eucharistic celebration, other sacred vessels are brought to the altar. The Roman Missal, you see, sitting on the altar, is used for the prayers. I have another video called What's on the Altar that you can watch to learn more about those items. and what they mean for us, what we use them for, and the reverence we show to them. No tour of any Catholic church would be complete without going to the tabernacle, the place where the Blessed Sacrament, the consecrated host in the form of bread, but bread that has become the body of Christ in the transubstantiation through the consecration at Mass is kept. It is Jesus himself who is present here. Tabernacles are often decorated in gold, symbolizing the value of what's inside. Gold is valuable in human terms. Jesus, who is inside the Blessed Sacrament, is of infinite value. Alongside, nearby the tabernacle someplace, you will see a candle burning. Burning as a reminder of how Jesus, who is the light of the world, is present in the tabernacle. In many churches, the tabernacle is center, in the center of the church, making it a prominent place. Other churches, like here at St. Thomas, it has a place set for it. Some churches even have chapels specifically for reservation for the Eucharist. To give Jesus a special place. It is Jesus who is present. It is Jesus whose presence we seek in our lives, always, but we know in a special way, when we celebrate the Eucharist, when we sit in his presence. We come to church to celebrate Mass. The Eucharist, the source and summit of who we are, the greatest of the seven sacraments. But it's not the only sacrament. I mentioned in the beginning, baptism, the gateway to all the other sacraments. Life in Christ begins in baptism for the sacraments. In baptism, we are anointed. There's an oil of catechumens. We have three different oils. Oil of catechumens, also known as the oil of sal salvation. Because in baptism, we begin to receive the gift of salvation. Called the oil of catechumens. The catechumen is one learning about their faith. Growing to be a disciple. Also used in baptism is the sacred chrism. It's used in confirmation. In ordinations also. We also have the oil of the sick. Oil in the infirmed, it's also called, that we use in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick for those who are seriously ill or dying. Three oils used in the sacraments. The oil is made from olive oil, must be pure olive oil. And the sacred chrism is added balsam. The sacred chrism has an aroma to it. After a child is baptized, or a person confirmed, if you smell where the oil has touched it on their heads, you can smell that perfume smell. A sweet aroma going up to God. Every church will have the oils in it. Sometimes a cabinet, clearly invisible in the congregation. Sometimes, if there's a chapel, it might be kept in the chapel. But the oils are kept. These oils are blessed at the chrism mass by the bishop, a sign of unity. A sign of coming together in faith.
one more thing that we have in churches for a sacrament. Our confessionals. For a tour of the confessional, I put now on the screen a link to a video I did previously. Talking about the sacrament of reconciliation, talking about how it's a gift to us, and a little bit of a how-to, showing you the confessional, and talking about how we celebrate the sacrament to seek God's forgiveness and mercy. Now we come to the sacristy. The sacristy is a place of getting ready for Mass. The sacristy is the place where all those sacred vessels and the vestments are kept to prepare for Mass. To celebrate the Eucharist worthily. What I like to point out here is what the priest wears. First is an L. They can come in a little bit different styles. Generally white. Sometimes you see them a little off-white, but I like the whiter the better because it's white, thinking of our baptism. When we were made pure, as children of God, the white L, worn by the priest, worn by the deacon, worn by the altar servers, symbolizes our baptism for all of us, our baptismal garment, when we are dressed in white. After the priest puts on the L, he then puts on the stole. And for the stole, for a priest, you can see how it hangs straight down. For deacons, it will, um, we don't, I don't have a deacon stole here, it would hang across at an angle and it's actually stitched together. The different style of stoles signifying the worship that we, the different roles that the priest and deacons have in the liturgy. Then the priest, after the stole, puts on the chasuble. The chasuble and the stole fit the liturgical color of the year. For more on the different colors of the year, the liturgical year, see my video about the liturgical year. A chasuble simply drapes over. A deacon could also wear something that might look like a chasuble from a distance. Called a, it's called a dalmatic. But it's a little different in that instead of just draping over the arms, it actually has sleeves. So if a pre deacon sticks out his arms, you can see then how it differs from a chasuble. Perhaps you already knew before you watched this video many of these things that we have in church. But I hope it helps you to think about what these things symbolize for us, what they represent, why we use them. That that helps you to come to a deeper faith, to a deeper appreciation of what we celebrate as we come together in our churches. Special buildings devoted specifically to praising and worshiping our Lord.